Hello superstars, let's get started with our Friday, February 12th, 2021 edition of the Norwood News Newsletter, published every Friday at the end of the day. So we have a lot of upcoming dates and important things for you to be aware of. Most of these we will go in detail in this actual newsletter. Coming up first on Monday, February 15th, schools and offices are closed for Washington's birthday, also known as President's Day. Tuesday, February 16th, uh, is the next installment of our Bedtime Stories uh, event for children to come to listen to stories as read by staff. Wednesday, February 17th, is a live instructional day since it is a shortened week due to Monday being off. Students should follow their Monday schedule. Tuesday, February 23rd, is the following week's Norwood Bedtime Stories event. Wednesday, February 24th is an asynchronous learning day for students, meaning that it's mostly independent work unless they have special sessions arranged by their teachers. Um, Wednesday, February 24th, that same day during the morning is our next coffee and conversation for the month of Feb February. And it's gonna be a very special one because rather than talking to you about a different kind of subject matter, since there still remain a lot of questions and information to share about the reopening plan, we're going to have a specialized session about Norwood's reopening plans. So how it impacts you, your students, all the logistics that you would ever want to know. We're going to go more in detail about that, but that's going to take place on the morning of the Coffee and Conversations during the Coffee and Conversations segment. Thursday, February 25th is going to be a second running of that session. The same exact information just in the evening to just give you another opportunity if you can't make it during the morning. So that's going to be specifically the reopening plan family information session. Okay, so report cards are now available in focus. Before you had a way of seeing certain grades in Schoology, but it was never an actual finalized report card. Now we have transitioned to a new system that's known as focus. It's known by a little icon of an owl. And um, you have to go first. We have the link here for you to click on it. If you click on it, it gets you to the focus page. And if you do it by phone, it should also work. It just may look a slightly bit different, but it should have the same process. Do not sign in first. You have to click on the sign in with Microsoft. That is the first step. Once you do that, it takes a new login from Microsoft and then you do what you normally do with, with like signing into Schoology, you put in the username and all that with at bcps.org at the end. So the instructions, if you want to click here for a written, written guide, um, if you need to zoom in, if you're looking at it from a computer, there may be zoom in controls in the bottom. If you put your mouse down or the cursor down, uh, you can always download this to your computer or to your phone. If you're looking at it by phone, you may not see the download button when you see this kind of a sharing platform. Uh, you may have to click on three horizontal lines and then you'll see the download button to download it to your phone where you can better view it in Zoom. Um, but when you zoom in a little more or you download this document, you see the different instructions and it's a little visual. It tells you what to do. Just follow it. It's actually fairly intuitive. Now, we have had some reports across the county of families who are doing these steps exactly correct and they get denied. They can't even get into the platform. They try and they try to sign in with Microsoft. It doesn't work or it says access denied. So please, please make sure that you contact the school if you're doing everything correctly and you just still cannot get in for whatever reason or you get in and you don't see the report card that has happened in some instances. So please don't spend any time trying to figure it out. If you just try a few times and it, then it just doesn't work, then we want to just immediately try to help you correct the problem. As we move to new platforms, there's always going to be a few glitches here and there, um, but we want to do our best to help you out. If you want to do a video, there's a sh very short video tutorial about it that actually shows you and gives you, takes you step by step during the process on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. So if you prefer that, that's actually a very handy guide to be able to visually walk you through the steps of being able to see your, your child's report card. Okay, so the reopening information, I'm actually going to save this for the end because we've covered this last week in a lot of detail and it's a fairly long explanation. So for if you've already seen it or you're already familiar with the survey and how to announce that you want your child to return or any children to return, that's mainly what I'm going to talk about here. It's not the actual plan that involves all the questions you would ask in the information session like the logistics, like transportation and schedules and lunchtime and, and how to guests who come to the school visits or 
pickups or all those things, that's actually going to be for the information session. So if you want me to go through once again uh, how you actually, like how do you go about requesting that your child go, returns to school and can you wait and when do they go back to school when you finally fill out the survey, that's what I will focus on when I talk about this at the end of the video. So now going on to a, a modified message from Nurse Debbie. She just This is the same information from last week's uh, newsletter, just a slight difference. We, we do have facts. We didn't have facts and we had said that we had facts. There were still some problems with our facts line after the ransomware attack and we weren't sure quite what they were. It worked, it didn't work, but now we know for sure that it works. But we have a new number. So if you need to, re if there's any changes in health status to your child, and what we mean by that is they have a new medical coverage, a new doctor, or if they have new diagnoses, uh, just anything that we would need to know to modify your existing registration, please make us aware. We are currently sending out copies of all the health forms so that if there's anything missing that you have yet to turn in, you have them now. Please get on it if you need to do get an appointment to get finished any vaccinations that we're, we were waiting on. You do not need to show proof of vaccination for COVID. We are only asking for the normal things that we would ask for you when you register your child. If you've already done that, you don't have to do anything at all. But if anything has changed, please fill out the forms. They have, if you don't have a physical yet and you were asked for that, please try to get that appointment set up since things are more spaced out and require more reservations. That takes time. So contact Nurse Debbie, contact the school. Uh, the fax line, if you want any doctor's office or anywhere to send forms directly, is 443-809-7057. You can always drop off forms in person. You can also mail them to the school. Uh, but please call the school ahead of time, and this is the school number, 410-887-7055, if you ever need to drop off any forms. As always, we just want to coordinate better, because we're going to have our hands full with a lot of things. There's going to be a lot of work taken up with the logistics of reentry and sticking to CDC protocols. So it's okay if you want to stop by, but try to give us a, a, a little bit of warning so we can plan and better be available safely to take things off your hands. And if you have any other questions or changes, you can also just call the school to contact Nurse Debbie. Um, also, if they're taking any medication, they need to get an, an order for that for, by the doctor, filled out and brought to the school. So talk to Nurse Debbie if you don't know what form that is or you need another copy. And please make arrangements to bring in not only the form, but also the actual medication. We have to dispense the medication ourselves. Uh, you cannot just send medication to your child and not say anything. Please make sure that we are aware of what it is and that we can safely dispense it to your child. Um, if you need any help finding a healthcare provider or obtaining a medical insurance, even just clinics, uh, just please contact Nurse Debbie once again at the school number and you can also reach her with her email. We're going to include all links and all information are going to be included in the description of this video as always. And Maryland, Maryland law does require the physical exam examination for when a student is first enrolling. So if you haven't done that there, or that was one of those things you had yet to just finish, please make sure you get that done. It includes also a blood lead test since there were some elevated levels of lead over the past handful of years in various areas. And that's something that is very easy to do when you go get your physical. It doesn't take very much and then you just give the results. Um, you can also not qualify if it turns out you didn't live in one of the affected areas. So there's an actual form part of your registration that mentions that. So if you've already taken care of that, then you have nothing to worry about. Family information sessions about Norwood's reopening plan. This is specific to your school to Norwood. So we shared some before, some info sessions. Um, there were some in Spanish particularly that were happening in the area for zones, for East Zone and West Zone. And so if you meant to go to one of those and you couldn't make it or you didn't even know about them and now you want to get down to the nitty gritty, the brass tacks about how is this going to actually work, well then all your questions will hopefully be answered and or if not we can get back to you during these sessions. It's going to be the same information, just two opportunities, either during the Coffee and Conversations time slot on February 24th, that is a Wednesday, so it's during an independent work, an asynchronous work uh, study day at 9.30 in the morning. Or it's going to be in the evening, you have a chance to do an evening on fe Thursday, February 25th at 7 p.m. Just join us via Google Meet, and if you want to come to both, that's fine. You want to come to either or, that's also fine. Just use the code NORWOODFAMILIES. 
now as for the uh, bedtime story session the next one's going to be this coming Tuesday February 16th at 7 p.m. as always thanks to everyone who comes to listen and participate and thanks to all the readers our new readers for this next session are going to be Miss Taylor Mrs. Faith and Mrs. Powell so as always you can connect using the Google code for Norwood stories that is all together Norwood stories lastly Internet solutions for those in need. Uh, we've gone over this at extensive detail, but we keep leaving it up because there are families that can benefit from this. We know that your situations are constantly changing. Uh, first main change that I've been mentioning since December when we put this up was is that the window for free to apply for free internet they were giving away for six months has closed. That's long been done since early January. But there's also a slight other change. Um, it's not internet based, but technology based. They also have at the BCPL libraries, not just hotspots like the schools do, but they also have Chromebooks you can check out. But you have to weigh the pros and cons because Chromebooks from the library do not have the security protocols that allow the teachers to see what the kids are doing if they're distracted and not paying attention to class. They can go to YouTube and completely not pay attention to what's going on in class. So you have to really weigh the pros and cons of there's no blocks, you know, do is my child disciplined enough, responsible enough to have that kind of freedom during their virtual learning. And, and also, are they responsible enough to not incur any losses or damages? Because you are responsible financially if you check out a hotspot or a computer from the library for free, but then something happens to it. The hotspots are much less expensive. I think they're only like 30 or so dollars, but a computer, well, Chromebook is going to be over $300. So you have to kind of weigh that as to whether it's worth it. But if you have nothing available, if you've been on the wait list for a device and you feel you, that you can supervise your children and be with them during the day, this might be an option for you. But uh, just ask me, David Castro. My information is included here and it'll be in the description of the video. You can call me also at the special, it's the Spanish helpline, but I've been using it during the, as we work from home to talk to all families. It's okay if you're not Spanish speaking and you call it, that's fine. You can get to me that way or you can call the school, uh, any of the information here. The last thing I'll mention is that we have, I've been getting reports from so, multiple families that Comcast, the low income plan, um, that's only $10 a month is getting a lot more stricter on its requirements. So if you have an outstanding balance with Comcast, let's say you had to cancel it because it was too expensive and then the pandemic happened and you just simply couldn't afford it and you have yet to f pay back or close that balance, um, they may not let you apply to this. I've had families that have been able to when they were more desperate and it was all about the kids getting to school. I've had situations now where they're not. They shun that and they say, nope, you got to take care of that balance or you're not going to do that. You don't qualify. So it's really at the discretion of Comcast as to how strict they want to be. Reach out to your provider. If you also have Verizon where you live, you know, for Fios or high-speed internet, uh, ask them, do you have any kind of a low-income plan or special plan just so that my daughter or son can get to school? Uh, just you know, try to shake all the trees if not, and there are public Wi-Fi hotspots available. We're going to have some occasional hot, warm streaks that could really help if you just need a spot where you can get some internet for a while with a computer to work. Um, I know it's a last resort, but you can search based on some interactive maps that are included in the flyer when you click here. Um, the flyer that goes over all the different resources that are available when it comes to internet. Um, Okay, so let us get into the nitty gritty about the reopening information. I want to stress once again, all those logistics about what happens once they're there, the, the hygiene, the cleaning, the lunch schedule, the day schedule, uh, the, the dismissal and the transportation and buses, all that stuff. That's all for the family information sessions. That's now assuming you are sending your kids back to school and now you want to know more about what happens when they're there, or how they get there. Right now, what we're going to focus on is how do you even get your kids back to school? Because it's not, if you haven't filled out any, there were some earlier surveys that were sent out and they were just general interest surveys. And then now there's a standardized survey that's been sent out to all of the schools and they have them on their websites. Some of them may have yet to put them up. Some of them don't even have them in English only. They have them in multiple languages. Ours is in English and Spanish. But um, this survey, I'm just going to let you know what it looks like looks like this. It's a form, it's online, and you get to it on the school uh, website, but the link is directly here. It's going to have this table that I'll talk about in a moment, and it asks you, and you have to complete every single one survey per child. 
So if you have multiple children at Norwood, one form per child. I know that seems tedious, but it's actually quite short, especially because of the, inf the issues after the ransomware attack. We just want to make sure we have the most up-to-date information for you. So copy, paste, copy, paste if necessary. But nonetheless, um, now we'll get into exactly what this talks about when it comes to reopening. So how do you opt to let your kid in? Well, first of all, if you do not opt to have your child or children return to school, if you want them to remain in virtual for whatever reason that be, you're not comfortable or you have high risk individuals that you live with and you don't want them going to and from, whatever the reasons are, we completely understand and you do not have to do anything. They will remain in virtual learning. So whether you want them to stay or you forget and don't fill out the survey, they will continue to remain and be enrolled full, full time in virtual learning. Now, the reason why we refer to returning to school as hybrid instruction and not just in-person instruction is because all students who return are going to have a hybrid model. They're going to be part time in person and part time virtual. And the reason why that is is because we cannot have everybody in at the same building at the same time, just like before. That's against policies. That doesn't make sense during a pandemic. So they will be split accordingly within their classes and groups into several groups where they are going to have a rotating of half are going to be in the classroom spaced out and half are going to be virtual. And then they're going to switch depending on the days of the week. It's Mon Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday. So that's what the groups A's and group B's mean is about when it comes to the cohorts. Group C are just those that remain virtual. But A and B's are going to have this switching situation. And there's also going to be a two hour early dismissal um, in the beginning for like a few weeks. And it's to help give those uh, virtual students a little extra time and attention since there's going to be a lot of attention to get the A's and B's, the, in, the hybrid students, set up and going and adjusted to the way things are. Um, if you have questions of what's that going to look like once they're there, are they going to be moving around, sitting? That's, for again, for the family information session. I don't want to take more time going into that right here, but we will talk about that at length. Um, but so there is a return timeline. Um, that first link that I have here that you can click on on the written form, and everything's going to be included in the description of this video. Um, but that link is basically the website of BCPS. It's the, it just gives you all this basic information about how the groups are going to be divvied up. Uh, by cohort and then it's going to have the return timeline and these phases are going to be you have to see which phase your child corresponds to so if you want your child to return to school say uh, they are in third grade at norwood well they don't apply for phase one because that's for students in public separate day schools there's only six of them in the county they're not regular public schools they're specialized schools for children of high needs or high disabilities so norwood is not one of them but students in preschool to grade two is phase two if your child is in third grade, they cannot return as early as March 1st. So, okay, what about here? Well, students in grades 3 through 12 with special needs served outside general education. Yes, your child may have a reading instructor or a special ed teacher or a physical therapist, occupational therapist, somebody, a speech pathologist that takes them out of the classroom and meets with them once a week, twice a week, whatever, to help them with a certain class or subject. That does not qualify for this. What we're talking about are the students that exclusively for all of their content areas have needs outside of the classroom. So if your child is a high needs student that does not go to a public se separate day school, you know, they don't go to a different facility, but they have all of their content area taught outside of the general classroom where the rest of their classmates are, then they fall into this category. So save my third grader did not fall into that category. Okay, they're not going to start as early as March 15th. Are they in the select career and technical education students notify? Um, no, they're not because that's more for high school. High school students have a certain CTE program that's a preparation and technical education readiness program, but not even all of them can do it. They have to be notified and selected by the school to have that option. So if they're in CTE, if you have a high schooler who's in CTE but was not notified, they still don't qualify under phase three. So now we're into phase four. As your third grader who does not have OGE full-time needs, outside general education needs, are they in grade six or nine? No, they're in third grade, so they cannot start as early as March 22nd. So then the remaining students, everyone else in grades three through five, seven and eight, and then 10 through 12 can start as early as April 6th. That's how you're to understand the timeline that is written here. You just find the one that applies to your child and that is the earliest time that they can apply, that they can they can not apply, the earliest time that they can be allowed in. 
The big if is depending on when you fill out the survey to return. If you've already filled out a survey, if you've already communicated your preference to your child's teacher, you should be okay. But if you have not done that, you never received it, you missed the memo, then this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to fill out the survey which has this next timetable. It's the um, in-person hybrid learning schedule. It's very similar on the left, which group, which phases we're talking about to that previous timeline. And on the right, it has those same start dates in bold. But you see these other weeks underneath. So now we're going to use that same exact example. Say I have a third grader who is a run-of-the-mill third grader, does not exclusively have outside general education for all of his content areas. Okay, what's the soonest that we can go, they can go in? Well, we already said that that's going to be um, the week of April 6th, I believe is what that was. Um, so April 6th is the soonest because 6th and 9th grade only is for the week of March 22nd. So April 6th is the soonest that they can start. But that is if you fill out the survey, this survey that you're looking at right here, by March 12th. So this middle column that was added on this survey and that you can see from this, if you click on this image here, this middle column is basically taking the information from the return timeline and then telling you, okay, when do you need to fill out the survey by to return by that date? It's giving you rolling windows of time to be able to decide when to return your child. So say you take the first month of March to just think about it, and then by April you, you're, you want them to go back. That's fine. You can do that. It's a, not an all or nothing situation. So uh, if you heard a lot about February 5th last week, it's okay. Not, that only was for preschool through grade two, mainly anyway. So if in, in this example of me having a third grade student, that wouldn't have applied. But since most of the children, whether it's preschool or uh, whether it's pre-K or kindergarten, first or second, they do fall into phase two. So they do have the ability to fill out the survey within these windows and then start during these weeks that you see here to the right. So if I had a second grader and I wanted them to start by the week of April 6, I would have to fill it out between March 6 and March 12. And it's just saying that you have to do it by 5 p.m. on the Friday date. So these end dates are always Friday. So by 5 p.m. on March 12th, I would have to fill out a survey for my second grader, first grader, kindergartner, or pre-K student to start at Norwood by the week of April 6. No sooner than that can they start. It just gives the school time to prepare. There's a lot of logistics to, to organize. We have to adjust and review numbers in the group of your, of your teachers. Um, so it's just there's a lot that has to happen. So just please be aware and be patient because waiting later is your right not doing it at all is your right but it's going to need some cooperation in your part and some patience because just imagine what teachers and staff have to go through to constantly adjust the class sizes and numbers in accordance to cdc policies so that that is seems like a headache and it is but they're gladly doing it to give you more control and more options so that is the big takeaway when it comes to requesting your child again if you don't feel comfortable or don't want to send them back don't fill out a survey that's all you have to take away from this and as you can look at this you have as you see here you have until may 7th this last column the row here is for everybody who hasn't made up their mind yet or is any of anyone at this point who hasn't made up their mind or yet just wasn't thinking about it has not decided you have until may 7th so that you can start the week of may 31st so those are your options when it comes to requesting and deciding that to send any child to in-person learning. One note that I will modify about this and add a de um, is that you need to fill out a survey per student and if you have other students in other schools you need to fill out that survey for that child. So let's say you have a child across the street at Hollabird or at Dundalk High School. Do not fill out the survey on the Norwood Elementary page for those older children who don't go to Norwood only do it for your Norwood children. There is a question in the survey that asks you at the bottom, how do you have other children in other schools? And it's just a yes or no question. You don't give us their names or any of their information, but it should be on the website. And I'm gonna show you right now, the webpage for Norwood, it's right here. This return to in-person hybrid instruction information, you just click on that and that gives you a letter that explains everything mostly that I've talked about, but inside the letter is going to be a link. 
So when you click on that link, it just opens up that survey that I was showing you that you actually have to fill out. So that's where you go on the home page if you want to if you want to, you know, fill out an elect to send your child. And just a little tidbit, all the newsletters are here. The link for the newsletters is under Norwood News, under the parent section of the menu, and then you'll see all the other newsletters that we have. So you can go back and revisit some of the topics, or if you need to just on your time get caught up, they're all here from the past school year. That's it for today's uh, edition. Thank you all for your patience. I'm sorry that these keep running very long, but we just want to make sure you have all of the information to make your choices for your family. I know they vary from family to family. We love you for it. We want to do everything we can to support you. Once again, happy Black History Month, and we're going to have the children are going to have special stories uh, and reports read to them by staff throughout the week in the morning announcements for next week and beyond about a different historical or modern person of interest that has just helped make this country so great through their cultural and ancestral uh, impact from being of African descent. So nonetheless, they're going to learn a lot about black history and different figures and prominent ones in black history. So thank you all and have a great weekend. Have a great week ahead of you. As always, keep on learning.